Hello again, I'm Dr. Sean Allen with The Gate Guys, the homunculus group, Want to Get Fast and Slow Guy Speed School, with my colleagues and partners, Dr. Ivo Werlop out in Dillon, Colorado, uh, Chris Corfist here in Chicago, and Dan Fichter out in New York. And uh, we're continuing on with our seminar series and DVD series here uh, with uh, some brief YouTube clips from some of these uh, seminars that we're giving and DVDs that we're putting together. Um, you can visit us on our websites, which you'll see at the beginning of this clip. Uh, please visit us there for free uh, websites, uh, our free newsletters, um, uh, DVD sales, and uh, some upcoming seminars that we do have, and where we'll be lecturing next. This clip here, we've gone over several things. We're going to talk about some of the strategies that you, we see as physicians, as coaches, as trainers, and therapists, and whatnot, that we see in some of our clients. And um, there's, uh, we, you hear us talk about frequently about ankle rocker. And um, I know we're, we're beating it into your heads right now, but ankle rocker is, uh, there's first heel rocker, as the forefoot hits the ground and the foot is on the ground with proper tripod positioning. Ankle rocker is this rockering of the tibia over the, the talus. Okay, you need to have uh, at least 100 degrees of ankle rocker in order to progress forward. What you'll see in a lot of your clients and, and athletes and whatnot is you'll see a failure of the actual rocker. Okay, and you'll see a compensation strategy. So we wanted to bring those compensation strategies, of which there's five or six, depending on how you look at it. And so if you can recognize these compensation strategies, you'll actually start to be able to recognize when you need to look for ankle rocker deficits. Okay, so we're going to talk about a few. So the first one we'll talk about, what I've done is I've put an elastic band around my knee so that you can see some of the knee positions because I'm going to show knee hyperextension and with slacks on you won't be able to see that. So. Uh, the first presentation, for example, if I'm coming into this position, I'm getting ready to take a step. I've got my rear foot, a uh, rear uh, calcaneal rocker or rear foot rocker. I've gone down into my tripod, toes are down. I'm going to progress over my foot and step forward. And you can see that I have at least 100 degrees of ankle rocker there or what we call ankle dorsiflexion. A lot of clients have a deficit there. They will get stuck here, but they still can progress forward. And so you'll see this when you're evaluating their gait. You'll see this when you do your stop motion uh, analysis of them running or walking. And as you get better at it, you can train your eye that you don't even need to use the stop frame. But the question needs to remain, once they get into this position and they lock here, how do they get forward? How do you do that? We've got a couple options. You can turn your foot in. You'll see these people with one side or both sides where they've gone into internal rotation of the foot, ankle, and or lower leg, or entire leg for that matter, through the femur. And <clears throat> that allows them to basically roll off the outer side of the foot. And when you roll off this lateral or outside of the foot, you still don't need to uh, have full ankle rocker. So I'm going to try and block my ankle at, uh, at uh, 90 degrees, and I'll progress over it by rolling to the outside. You'll see that I never got to positive ankle rocker here and yet I was still able to progress forward. You'll notice that in this presentation looking straight on, you'll see a knee deviate outside the sagittal plane and towards the frontal plane to get around. So you'll see that gait where they drop the leg out. Again, this is what you'll see in the gait cycle. You see them dropping out. So the knee is compromised in the sagittal plane into the frontal plane when you see that on one side. So turn the foot in, heel strike, they'll swoop in and bend the knee. Okay, the more internal rotation they'll have of the foot, the more the knee will be maintained in the sagittal plane. The less internal rotation they have, this is normal five degrees ankle pro or four foot progression. If it's very slight, maybe five degrees negative foot progression angle, you'll see a more pronounced lateral frontal plane deviation. If it's more pronounced internal rotation, the knee will still bend straight forward. So that's one progression. The more typical one. Or, or compensation. This is the more typical compensation is to turn the foot out. As you come into this position, now I can collapse through the arch. The big toe will frequently start to develop into a bunion because of this. Okay, so again, approaching ankle rocker, it locks out. Well, if I turn my foot, I still don't need, I'm going to stay negative 90 degrees, and now I can just progress through here which drops the arch, that dropping of the arch regains some internal rotation of the tibia and I can progress forward. So from the front, taking a step, dropping through, I'm still not getting positive ankle rocker but I found a way to progress forward. That's compensation number two. The next compensation is 
I hit my ankle or, or foot rocker, I get to 90 degrees, I get stuck because I got an ankle rocker deficit, I can get into my calf or the posterior compartment and move forward. Those are the bouncy gait type phenomena that you see where they take a step and they just go straight up, which allows them to go into four foot rocker early. So we call that premature four foot rocker to get over an ankle rocker deficit. Coming up, progressing forward. Kind of a pass the buck. If you can't do it at the ankle, you try and do it at four foot. The next one you'll see in people who wear a lot of flip flops and sandals, um, and you'll see a lot of uh, teenage girls with this, they tend to drop the pelvis and hyperextend the knee. By doing that, here's the ankle, de ankle rocker deficit. They get to 90. Remember we need 100 degrees or more. I drop the knee back, which pushes my pelvis forward, and now my body mass is forward of ankle rocker, and now I can just fall forward. I still did not need to get, as you'll see, working really hard here to get my hyperextension, I still don't need to get any positive ankle rocker you know, past 90 degrees. So another way to cheat. So the first one we've gone over is internal, the second compensation is external, the third is to come up, the fourth, hyperextend, the fifth is more or less a combination of that. You'll see a lot of anterior pelvic tilt, which will, again will then help you with external or a hyperextension of the knee, which will get you your body mass forward over ankle rocker. So there's your fifth. The fourth and fifth are kind of together. <clears throat> We've talked about ex excessive pronation, which drops the arch down. And a good example of this, we've talked about in some other videos, you can see good arch position right there. Let's say I can only get to 90 degrees of uh, tibial progression over the ankle. I need to get 100, 110. If I'm stuck here, watch the position of the tibia as I drop the arch. There's my 110. I did not achieve any change at the ankle rocker, but I compromised midfoot pronation. And um, by doing increased foot pronation and collapse of the arch, I actually was able to tip the forward, foot forward. This is one of the most common ones, is just hyperpronating through the midfoot to achieve ankle rocker. Okay, the last one we'll talk about here is um, the, the clients who've chosen the opposite, where they have just chosen to hypersupinate. Okay, they've made this ankle very, very rigid, and now what you see is a lot of frontal plane deviations in their gait. They'll take a step, bump out, take a step, bump out, take a step, bump out. So by moving frontal through the hips over a rigid ankle, you can still progress forward and you really don't have to move the ankle at all. So again, the, the, in review, internally rotate is first compensation, second is external, third is um, coming up on the toes, fourth, hyperextend, fifth, arch, combining with hyperextension, hyperpronation, or excessive supination. So really we've gone over most of the actual postural deficits that you'll see in your clients. A lot of them you can see, which is the purpose of this video, was just to show that a lot of these things can be related to failure of proper ankle rocker.